grab your Bibles, let's get to the heart of the matter. There is a word from the Lord. And I am excited about the privilege of preaching. The 103rd number of Psalms is where we're going. Actually, yeah, that is where we're going. But I was about to preach last week's sermon to y'all again. Oh, bless his name. I remember. I just want to find out, is there anybody that actually took the initiative to honor the assignment of God and that you have uh, started your journal of remembrance, that you have started writing down the decades of your life and putting down the things that God has done? It's amazing that the more you write of what God has done, the more you forget what he just hasn't done yet. And I encourage you, if you have not already done so, please do not do yourself a disservice. Please honor the instructions of the Lord in that you stop for this month and at least, if no other time, you stop and remember. There are so many testimonies in this place. As a matter of fact, you sit next to a testimony right now. There are so many people who've gone through a test, but they pass, and now they are the testimony. I have graduated. I am no longer one who has testimonies. I have been through enough at this stage of life that I am the testimony. I am the evidence. The enemy is a great evidence tamperer. But he cannot tamper with the evidence of my reality. I am here. And the fact that I'm still here means that God has been exceptionally good and has shown me both grace and mercy. I don't know how many of you can relate to me in this regard, but how many of you know that the things that you've done, the things that have happened to you, the things that have happened around you should have taken you out by now? If nothing else, your mind should have been gone with all the stuff and the pressure and the pain and the regret, the, re the sorrow, the sickness, the, the situational circumstances that have tried to suffocate you and suck the life right out of you. I don't know how many of you can relate to this, but I've had moments where I didn't even want to get out of the bed. I should have been cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs by now. But the fact that I'm here and I'm, I have cognition, I have capacity to even be here, to think, to speak, to breathe, to move, to act, to dance, to walk, to talk, is evidence in itself that God is able to do exceeding abundantly and above all you can ask or think. Come on, push somebody, just push them, put your hand on the shoulder, just push them, push them right quick because I want you to feel what a testimony feels like. This is what it feels like, this is what it feels like. This is what it feels. And a whole lot of us, we're too shy with our testimony. We don't want to tell nobody we've been through anything. We, we, we want to declare that we woke up like this. Please be clear, you didn't wake up like this. We know it. We already are aware that every single person in this life, you shall have tribulation. It's not maybe, not perhaps, it's not if, it's when. It's you shall have tribulation. And in this life, you're going to go through some stuff, but the fact that you're here means that you are evidence. Because if he did it for me, <laughs> tell your neighbor, say, if he did it for me, he can do it for you too. Yeah, if he did it for me, you do. You ain't got to hate on my swag, because if he did it for me, you ain't, you ain't got to be envious of my come up, because if he did it for me, then he can do the same thing for you too. That praise was for you, this praise is for your neighbor. Thank God that he kept them alive long enough to be seated next to you in the sanctuary. No, don't be selfish. Because when you praise God for other people's blessings, you posture yourself in humility and God says, now I can, if you've humbled yourself, now I can exalt you. Glory to his name. The 103rd number of Psalm. We're only going to do two verses today. We're going to focus our sh shine our sermonic spotlight on this particular area. Only two verses, but I, I promise you they're profound and the profundity of which you will absolutely grasp by the end of this message. In the 103rd number of Psalms, verses 1 and 2. That's it. The 103rd number of Psalms, verses 1 and 2. And it simply says, as a matter of fact, let's read it together. Say it with me. Say, bless the Lord. O oh, my soul and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Come on, verse 2. 
Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. We're going to do it one more time from the top. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Father God, in the name of Jesus, it's a preachable moment and I can't do it without you. Speak through me and to me and have your magnificent and marvelous way. God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing and acceptable in your sight and you get the glory. Let the divine revelation of your Holy Spirit impart within us everything that we need in order to be vessels that bring victory to other people's lives. Let us not be a tree with leaves, but let us be a person with fruit. Not just any kind of fruit, but help us to be the fruit of your tree that remains. And I cast down every demonic principality and place it in its proper perspective, which is beneath our feet. Say to the Lord, rebuke you. You are already defeated. We are fighting a defeated foe. So every trick, every demonic thought that has been seeded into our hearts and in our minds, we bind it and cancel it in the name of Jesus Christ. Remove every hindrance to our remembrance. Remove every obstacle to our ability to recall all that you've done. And help us now, God, to honor the prayer of David and that we forget not all your benefits. Get the glory out of this preaching moment, anointed with your grace and power. In Jesus' name we pray. Let everything that has breath shout hallelujah. Come on, I need about a hundred of you to shout hallelujah. Maybe 300 to shout amen. amen. You may be seated in the presence of our God. This is a November to remember. This is a November to remember. It is my task to make sure that I am equipping you, that I'm nudging you, that I'm edging you, pushing you, prodding you, and pulling you to the place of remembering how incredibly good God has already been, and because of that, how incredibly good God is going to continue to be. His mercy endureth how long? For about a month, how long? For about a year, how long? His mercy endureth forever, which means that you have the blessed assurance of knowing that God just hasn't been good yesterday, but he's going to even be better tomorrow and they, they said it this this way when I was growing up every round goes higher and higher uh, it, every day with Jesus gets sweeter than the day before all of those were colloquial comments and commentary but they're rooted in precept and principles and even the practice of God's word his truth that every day with him gives you a new glory and a new mercy. He said, I'm not going to leave you at this level of glory, but my obligation to myself is that I'm going to take you from this glory to another glory. So you shout it this way today. You ain't even seen what I'm about to do in your life. If you knew how I was about to blow your mind, how your enemy was going to be sitting there scratching their head trying to figure out how in the world you were able to get in, to go in, to walk in, to come up, to, build, to be built up, to be pushed up, to be restored, revived, refreshed, renewed. If you could see what I was about to do in your life, there would be nobody on your row or in your section that could keep you quiet right now. They would have to sit on your hands because you couldn't stop waving them. They would have to stand on your feet because you couldn't stop dancing. If you knew what God promised he was going to do in your life. That's why it's imperative, family, that I do this and I stop all the momentum of our year and say, pause, we need to go back and remember what God has done. Because if God has been this good already and he promised to take us from glory 
to glory. In other words, he said every day we're going to get up and see a new mercy. That something else spectacular, merciful, incredible, gracious, magnificent, phenomenal is guaranteed to take place in our lives. Then that ought to be reason enough for us to always bless God at all times. Because even in my bad times, I make it look good. Even in my rough moments, my praise will confuse you because you can't understand why I'm still shouting and why I'm still standing but if you knew the kind of hell I already been through then you would not be confused as to why I ain't messed up about what you just said about me on Twitter Facebook or on any social media diaspora please understand I know who my God is me and God we like this we ride or die, we've been through some stuff. And I've seen too much to be rattled in this season. I've lived too long and experienced too much to be messed up in this season. How long is it gonna take for you to understand that he is the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore? How long will it take for you to understand that if he did it for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, if he did it for Daniel, if he did it for Noah, if he did it for Jonah, if he did it for Elijah, Elijah if he did how long before you realize if he did it for your great granddaddy if he did it for your great grandmother if he did it for your mama and your daddy how long will it take for you to understand God is going to do it for you too hold on one second preach boy sometimes I got to preach to myself Tell somebody, you need to talk to yourself. Doubt, confusion, disobedience, disillusionment. All of these things raise up, these dastardly deeds of the demonic raise up against us and cause us to forget who our God is. But the scripture says that a people that know their God, the word know there is not a familiarity. It is an intimacy. It, it, is not, it is not just I am aware. It is I am intimately involved. Uh, God used it in another place in scripture when he says, and he knew her. To know was an intimate act, action or activity uh, uh, of knowing. It was not just acquainted with, familiar with, but it was an intimate knowledge of. And the scripture says that a people that know, have an intimate relationship with their God, shall do great exploits. In other words, great things are going to happen when you stop for a minute and get intimate with who God is because of what God has already done. It will give you the capacity to do even greater things in your tomorrow. I'm preaching better than y'all saying amen right now. Just give me about two seconds to work the middle. Here we go. Please understand that most of the time, it is the amnesia of the enemy that causes us to panic, to walk in fear, which is not of God, and to give up on the destiny that we're right at the edge of. Many times, if you look at the scriptural text, the people of God would be right at the edge of their destiny and they would die right there. And some of you are so close to it that if you just roll over a little bit, if you scoot a little pinky toe, if you just wave a little bit, you might run right into the increase, the favor, the deliverance, the healing, the restoration that God has been storing up and waiting to drop in your life. He says, but if you're faithful over this season, I'll give you rule over many things in the next season. In other words, if you can shout in this moment, then I'll give you the reason to shout even greater in the next moment. If you can believe in me in this season, I'm going to blow your mind in the next season. If you can trust me in this season, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something so incredible that it will confuse the enemy in your next season. This is a test. <laughs> 
This is just a test of the emergency praise system. I want to know who is faithful right now because that means God is about to blow your mind in your next movement. Somebody praise God on the level of your confidence. Did you forget? Did you forget it was me that brought you the last year? Did you forget it was me that kept you when you didn't have sense enough to know you needed to be kept? Did you forget that it was me that protected you and the bullet didn't hit you in the head but went by your head? Did you forget it was me that let you drive by the accident and you weren't dead in the accident? Did you forget? Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. This is a November to remember. I, I started, I started the, the, the series with the entire concept of memory. And my whole premise last week was to make sure that I pushed you into a place where you remember. But today I want to take it a step further because I want to make sure that you understand not only do you have to recall or remember, but you also have to rehearse. In the 103rd number of Psalm, David praises the Lord for his abundant mercies. David even here deals with the concept of memory. He says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul. This is the reason that blessing him becomes prevalent in priority because he says forget not in other words remember all his benefits the original hebrew verb translated forget means to lose memory or remembrance of but it can also mean to ignore or cease to care about so why was it imperative that david who wrote this particular psalm why was it imperative for him to admonish the people of God, admonish even his own soul, to not forget the Lord's benefits? Here it is, real simple. Because David figured out something that most of us have, it has escaped our capacity of understanding. It has escaped our ability to recognize this dynamic truth. That complacency breeds contempt. In other words, when you become too comfortable, you start ignoring the value of what it is you have. <sighs> this is not a new phenomenon. You saw it when you were a child, when you got the new toy. Oh, you played with it every day, all day. But let, it, let the new wear off. Okay, this is a hard crowd. Let me help you all out. When you got your new car, don't eat in it. You got some on your shoes. Make, make sure you get that off before you get in my new car. I don't want no crumbs in it. Don't touch it. No, no, no. Park down there. Don't park close to the door. Come on, that's when you got your new car. Now, your check oil and engine light been on for the last 30 days. And you keep telling yourself, I'll get to it. I'll get to it. Not only do you have crumbs in it, you got a whole french fry stuck between your seat that you dropped and never thought to get out. Oh, help us, Jesus. Complacency breeds contempt. And when you become too comfortable with a privilege, you start mistaking it as a right. You've seen it in your children. You ask them to clean up their room and they have a grudge. They mad, angry, and bitter. Throwing stuff, closing doors a little too hard, murmuring and mumbling under their breath. When they forgot, <laughs> I, I want you to clean up a room that I have allowed you to occupy in my house. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I need you to help me to straighten up what I'm paying to make sure you have opportunity to even clean up. But you got the audacity, the unmitigated, lost your mind gold 
You have literally lost yourself to the point that you got the nerve to be mad because I asked you to do something and I'm doing everything to make something, make sure you got something to do it in. You've seen it in relationships. You give and give and give and you've done everything that you can and, 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 and in the midst of frustration, you forget what has been done and you, you in turn start focusing on what has not been done. It's because you've gotten comfortable and complacent and you realize or you think that you realize you don't need or it's a right or you're owed something in return. But let me be clear, God doesn't play like that. You think you're a disciplinarian. You think you're the one that will get your child together. That you'll tell somebody where they should be standing or where they belong in a circumstance. God will chin check you. Here's how my daddy used to say it when he was preaching when I was a little boy. He said, if you get too high, the Lord will bring you down. And, and I love the concept of it because it's so real, it's so relevant, it's so true, it's so right, it's so righteous. Because God says, if you humble yourself, then I will exalt you. But I resist the proud. He says, I literally resist those who are walking in so much pride that they forget I don't owe them breath. I don't owe them a heart beating in their chest. I don't owe them blood flowing in their vein. I don't owe them this, this, this dynamic reality that we now constitute as life or living. I don't owe them anything. They're not even worthy to gather the crumbs beneath my table. But because I love them so much, I gave them Jesus who canceled the penalty of their own sin, their own disobedience, their own rebellion. And now they have an opportunity to experience real life and real living why did David admonish us because he realized that most of us have gotten comfortable we've gotten complacent this is going to be challenging to you and I pray I pray that it hits you right where you live but but how many times do you wake up and you forget to tell him thank you how many times do you forget to schedule him into your day You've got a time for everything, a time to brush your teeth, wash your face, a time to bathe, a time to go get your coffee, a time to get to work by, a time to take your break, a time to take your lunch, a time to get on the phone, a time to check your social media. You got, a, you got time for everything, but when is the last time you said, God, this is your time and your time alone? Uh, I told you it wasn't going to be comfortable. I knew my amens would be a little short right there. But please understand, God says, I, I, I am here to make sure that you remember who I am. Remember the Lord your God. Remember who I am so that you do not get complacent and comfortable and think that I owe you anything. You can tell a person's capacity to remember because it's almost impossible to remember how good God has been and not want to praise him. So, so what, what is David admonishing us to practice? Remembrance. He says, remember, forget not all his benefits. He's admonishing us to remember all that the Lord has done. He even starts talking to himself. He says, tell your soul this. And this is where I got, I got excited because it wasn't just an act of remembrance. It was an act of rehearsal. He said, don't just remember it. It's not enough for you to recall it. But now I need you to rehearse it. That's why you got to write it down so you can remind yourself on a regular, continual, perpetual basis daily. You should be going through your list and you should be adding to it every single day. By the time you get to the end of your life, your children should be able to open an entire book and they should be able to testify. My mama went through a lot. My daddy endured a lot. But God, this God, the same God that kept them through, through all of these pages is the same God that I'm worshiping and the same God that's going to keep me through all the pages of my life. You got pages. You got chapters already of what God has done in your life but David says I need to rehearse this so I don't need to check out this that he says forget not all of his benefits he tells his soul he tells the very essence of his existence to bless the Lord watch this not one time not three times six times he rehearses this to himself 
You cannot remember his benefits and not want to praise him. So he rehearsed it enough that he is constituted as one of the greatest worshipers that dance before God. Even God looked at him in all of his wretchedness and saw righteousness and said, this is a boy after my own heart. With all the mistakes and the problems and, and, and all the, the hiccups along the way of his life, he was still, he, he got to the conclusion of the matter and even God looked at his hands and said, they're too bloody. I can't use you to build my temple. But God still loved him enough to look at him and look upon him as the apple of his eye and, and a man after his own heart. It was because David never got out of the posture of remembering who God is. Even when he went astray, he would check himself, come back to God in sackcloth and ashes and, and, and in repentance and asking for God's forgiveness and in worship and thanksgiving, adoration and praise. And God says, I am so grateful to have a child like you. David reminded himself six times, six times. He said in verse one, he says, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. In verse two, he says, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, forget not all of his benefits. In verse 20, he says, bless the Lord, ye his angels that excel in strength and do his commandments. And in verse 21, he says, bless the Lord, all ye hosts, ye ministers of his that do his pleasure. And in verse 22, he says, bless the Lord, all his works and in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, he concludes it, O oh my soul. Six times he rehearses this instruction to praise God and praise was the reaction to the reflection. When he reflected on God's goodness, it was easy for him to react or respond in praise. I figured out the challenge with most of us uh, holding and harboring our praise and holding it hostage is that we have forgotten how good God is has really been see we bless or praise the Lord by spending time in grateful remembrance of his mercies the things that he's already done give us the inclination to praise him for who he is and what he's capable of, of doing forget not all his benefits in other words you have to be aware said with me say aware Come on, everybody, the whole classroom, aware. aware. See, the will of God always has a re in front of it. There's nothing new under the heavens. Everything is reintroduced, reestablished based on what has already been established in heavenly places. Thy will be done on earth as it already is in heaven. So God's will is established in heavenly places. That's why you have things in the will of God like restore or regenerate or regene or release or remove or remember or rehearse. It's because they're already done. You're just waiting on the manifestation in the earthly. But when you re or put the awareness that God has already done it in front of you, then you do not have to worry about forgetting because you are aware of what has already been done are you with me to re means to again so if God, God gives us instructions to remember remember the Lord thy God remember please understand that it means you are actually again rehearsing something that has already been established are y'all with me Come here, come closer. No child left behind. You are remembering because it has already been established in heavenly places. You're just waiting on the manifestation in the earthly circumstance. So when I rehearse or remember the goodness of God, it's not just about what he's already done in manifestation. It's also about what God is about to do in my tomorrows. It's about how he's about to bless me based upon the truth that has been established. Okay, y'all gonna make me work hard right here. See, some of you are blinded by, by reality. Your reality has superseded God's truth. And what you see now is, is, is above what God has said. Because if God has said a thing, the thing does not exist tomorrow. It exists at the moment he says it. That 
means I don't have to wait till I see it to shout about it. I don't have to wait till I see it to get excited over it because God already said it. It already exists in heavenly places. So when I remember the good of, the, of God, I am establishing again what God has already established in heavenly places. That's why people say don't wait till the battle is over, but shout right now. It's because it's already done. Say this to yourself. It's already done. No, talk to yourself. You ain't crazy. You convinced. Say it's already done. No, no. Say it like you know it's about to happen in your household. Say it's already done. Come on, like the dreams that you've had on your dream board, your vision board, have already been established in heavenly places. You're waiting on God to do it in the earthly circumstance. Somebody shout, it's already done. The healing that you've been waiting for the doctor to tell you is going to come has already happened. You're just waiting on the, the world to catch up with what God has already spoken. I call every tissue, every organ, every molecule, every every tendon, every bone, every sinew, of every cell of your body into alignment with this truth. Don't look at your reality. Look at his truth. He was wounded for your transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace is upon him and by his stripes, not you will be, not it might happen, not it's going to happen later, but you are already healed. I'm trying to help you see if you just remember who God is and what he said, you can shout right now. Bless his name. Bless his name. The problem is you're no longer aware. You have lost your awareness. I also don't want you to just lose your, I don't want you to just know that you have to be aware, but I need you to understand you also have to activate. Because the benefits, forget not all his benefits. The benefits of God are available, but they're not automatic. It requires us to work with God. See, I think most of us have that wrong because we expect that the benefits are just supposed to fall in our lap. But you only get benefits when you decide to use them. Uh, how do you do that? Because your faith, your, your faith is predicated upon your ability to believe what God has already said. And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So when he spoke the word, then it would begin the process of building your faith. But in the book of James, it gives this clear indication. You can have all the faith and all the confidence in the world, but if you don't have works coupled with your faith, then it's going to always fall flat and remain dead. I can say all day long, I'm getting the house. I'm coming into a new season. God's going to heal my heart. He's going to heal my body. He's going, I can say all day long, but if I don't put good works along with my great faith, then I'm not going to see the manifestation of what I have said. All the speaking it, decreeing it, and declaring it in the world is not going to give you a paycheck. All the work that you need to do is going to bring you the increase necessary, and God promised he would open the door of opportunity and give you favor when you walk through it but you got to walk 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 not only do you have to be aware you have to activate but then you also have to appreciate because if you don't guard the benefits of God it will be confiscated everything that you don't guard everything don't put a watchman on everything that your grace that his grace and mercy is not placed in front of it will be confiscated health is a benefit Woo. It's be a little rough right through here. Health is a benefit, but you have to guard what you've been given. You cannot do whatever you want to do in this body and think that you're going to remain healthy. If you're not a guardian, then your health will be confiscated. And now you're angry with God because he, no, God said, I didn't eat. You did. I didn't get comfortable with the fact that I have a body and I can sit. I didn't get idle. You did. Oh, bless his name. Oh, hold, 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 hold on. Preach, boy. My God. Y'all feel that? That's called conviction. It's just went, it just went through the room. The whole room just felt it. I, I, even online, I feel, I, I feel that's called conviction. That's that feeling. You, you, can't, you need a name for it. It's called conviction. 
You have health, but you have to guard anything that you do not guard and protect. Relationships is a benefit. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for people to dwell together in unity. That's a benefit of God. But if you don't guard and protect your relationship, then your relationship will be over. It will be confiscated. So please understand that having an appreciation for the benefits is a mandatory nature, a mandatory dynamic. That if you do not put that in practice, then you're going to lose what it is that he has benefited you to have. Are y'all with me? So here's a couple things I want you to know about the benefits. And I'm done. Three things specifically. Remember the Lord your God. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. It's, this is going to be a little challenging. It's, it's going to be a little distinctive and different because it's going to push you out of your comfort zone. It calls you now to not only just remember, but to even rehearse what it is he has allowed you to recall. Are you with me? But there's some confusion about these benefits. The one thing that we always miss and we mess up in this is bless the Lord, oh my soul, and remember the Lord, and I forget not all of his benefits. When we quote this, most of the time what we think of is something positive, affirmative, something pleasant, something good, something, something encouraging, something enlightening and uplifting, something very, praise the Lord. But I want, I want to make sure you, you understand. Benefits come with challenges. I'll say it a different way. With the benefit comes a burden. And we associate benefits with only the good side or the easy side of it. But benefits come innately with challenges. Major medical insurance is a benefit. Whenever you take a job and they say we got a great benefit package, they include and incorporate major medical insurance. Uh, but but it, it's only used to prevent sickness or mostly used after people get sick. You don't realize the true value of it until you actually have to use it. Ooh, I'm preaching good right now to myself. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, yeah, most because most of us we don't want to see that in order to experience the value of the benefit, you got to go through the burden of the situation. Life insurance is a great benefit to have, but you don't experience life insurance or your family doesn't experience it until the transition of the person. God's benefits are there because they help you get through the downsides of life. So when he says, forget not all his benefits, I don't want you to get to a place of cynicism where the moment it doesn't work out the way you think it should or everything is not all roses, you think that God has now withstained or withheld his benefits. No, his benefits actually kick in when life starts to kick you. His benefits kick in when the enemy tries to put his foot on your neck. You don't really understand the value of his benefits until you have to use it until I got the bill from Blue Cross Blue Shield I had all of this surgical procedure done on this on this shoulder they cut me until they, they couldn't cut me no more I got scars I got a screw in my shoulder nylon threads in here and they bring you in and they treat you so kind. Come on in. How's everything? Is okay? You need a wheelchair? No, I'm good. I'm cool. So can I get you some ice chips or anything? No, I'm, I'm, I'm good. You know what? As a matter of fact, bring me a few of those. It's like, put this on and do this and do that. Now, now, now I, I'm going to shave your arm. And, and I'm going to, I said, is it going to hurt? She says, no, it's not going to hurt. You want me to do it for you? No, I got it. I said, okay, don't hurt me. Come hit you. It's so nice. Just everything is just, they offer you the world. They're so pleasant. Oh, let me put you, are you cold? Put these socks on. I was like, well, these are good. They put this thing around it. This is a warming blanket. It blows hot out. I said, shut up. I get one of these. I mean, I just was, 
I was like, these people, at least they're so nice. The anesthesiologist comes in. He wants to explain everything that's about to happen. And he gives me a, a whole rundown and a whole walkthrough. And he's really gracious. And he says, you know, I'm going to tell you everything's going to happen. I said, oh, man, he's okay. He was cool. He said, man, so where's your church? I said, it's over in Bolivar. He said, yeah, I pass there all the time. I mean, we chumming it up. We, we boys. We buddies. He said, well, you want the nerve block? I said, block everything. We'll figure it out when I come out. But in the meantime, give me all you got. I don't feel nothing. As a matter of fact, how you going to do this block? Because that can't hurt. He says, oh, no, no. So I'll give you this and I'll put you to sleep and then I'll give you nerve. I said, well, do what you got to do. The little nurse comes in and she's like, okay, I'm the nurse that handles this and I'm going to be monitoring this and I'm another nurse comes in. I'm the nurse. I'm, and then we got done and the surgery was a success. They, they called and checked on me. They called me, y'all. We're just trying to see if you're good. I said, thank y'all so much. I'm great. I'm still high. This is incredible. I love y'all. And then came the bill. Every band-aid, every sock, that warming blanket, this nurse had 10,000, this nurse gets 5,000. Every, every needle that they use, they had this medication, we gonna pay for that. You got this shot, you got this, and it's a, you got an ultrasound, that's a little extra, we gonna throw that in. You had cool atmosphere, you had a wheelchair going to the car, we gonna throw that in, a little bit of something on the top of that too. I mean, every single little bitty thing until it was tens and tens and tens and tens and tens of thousands of dollars, and I saw that bill and almost passed right on out. And said, can y'all take out whatever y'all put back in? I'll just deal with it. But then about, a, about, about a, a week or so later, I got another bill. And the other bill shows up. And it says, this is how much you owe. But this is how much we paid. I said, shut your mouth. Y'all paid all of that for me? I only got to pay $900? I know that sounds like a lot of money, but when you're looking at 90, 900 don't mean nothing. I said, you mean to tell me that all I got to do, and you're going to give me a payment plan? Shut your mouth. I got benefits. I got the ability to know that the price has already been covered, that it's been paid, and I don't have to do anything carry this light affliction so that you can you can illustrate that you've already carried the cross I thank God for his <laughs> but we don't want to pay the 900 because we don't believe benefits should have a burden imagine if Imagine if they said, well, that's okay. If you don't pay the 900, we're going to tack the 90 back on you. No, 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 I'm good with the nine. No, no, I'm good. No, we're going to work it out. Jesus can work it out if you let him. <laughs> benefits come with a burden, but benefits come with caution. It's a warning. You have to be selective about what you remember and what you rehearse. The enemy is a master imitator and manipulator. The enemy would trick you and have you doing the wrong thing at the wrong time, saying the wrong stuff to the wrong people. And doing, he, the enemy is a master manipulator, and he will trick you by imitating a reality. He will give you a reality, but it, it, and it looks close enough, but it's not really truth. Okay. That, that went, so facts, reality. Truth, revelation. Y'all don't, oh, come closer, no child left behind, come on. So, so there's a distinctive difference between facts and truth. Your reality is that you don't have no money in your account. Somebody say amen. amen. But the truth is you got a God who promised I'm going to meet all your needs, not according to what's in your account, but according to what's in my account, and my account is eternal. 
the, fa the, real the facts or your reality is you got this sickness, you have this illness, you have this thing that the doctors cannot figure out or they're going to try to take out or they're going to try to work out. But the truth is I'm already healed. I'm just waiting on y'all to catch up with what God has already declared over my tomorrows. I know what the difference is between my reality and God's truth. I'm going to lean on what he said over what I see. I walk not by what I see, but I walk by what he said. And because of that, it gives me comfort and confidence and I don't have to rehearse what the enemy is letting me see. I can rehearse what God has already said. I don't have to keep communicating. Stop pouring your heart out and your pain out on people who do not have the capacity to fix the situation you're in. All they can do is pat you on the back, pray for you, or wallow in your pity. Start rehearsing with people who will speak only truth. I only want to hear what God has said. I don't want to hear your opinion. I don't need to know your feelings. Don't tell me about your experience with this. Don't share with me what you think the outcome is going to be. I need you to tell me what did God say about this situation. How did God say he'll fix it? When did God say he'll do it? What do I need to do in order to get it? That's what I need to hear. I want his truth. As a man thinketh in his heart, what? So what you rehearse becomes what you do. I'll say it a different way. What you rehearse becomes who you are. So what you have to do now is practice what God has said. What you practice, you become great at. Some of you have practiced being complainers. You are a professional. You have a PhD in complaints. W watch this. Watch this video right quick. Jordan left side. I practice as if I'm playing in a game. So when the moment comes in the game, it's not new. To me. And every day in practice was like that to me. It was a competition. For me. That's the beauty of the game of basketball. That's the reason why you practice. That's the effort. So when you get to that moment, you don't have to think. Instinctively, things happen. Short for the win. Got it! At the buzzer, he's done it again! Work ethic eliminates fear, you know? So if you put forth the, earth, the work, then what are you fearing? You know you, what you're capable of doing, what you're not. I never feared about my skills, you know, because I put in the work. It is all over! That's a pop -up so the question is, what are you rehearsing? Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. What are you rehearsing? The worst time in the world to talk to your family and your friends is when you hurt. Because they're going to help you rehearse your pain. If there be any virtue or any praise, think on these things. In other words, remember the good that God has done. Rehearse the truth of God's promises. And then you will defeat the enemy and walk through this moment. How is it? Ooh, I feel the Holy Ghost right here. How is it? That you are still rehearsing things that you lived through in your childhood. You still mad and they are gone on to glory. It's unfair. I, didn't, I, didn't, I can't believe they did this to me and I was abused. I was wounded. I was hurt. I, I, was, I was taken advantage of. I was mistreated. I was betrayed. My heart was broken. They did this and they did that and they did this. And I was 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 and I was. But today I am and I will be and I will be and I will be. And I 
will have and I will do and I will achieve and I will accomplish and I will get it and I will come through and my children will and my children's children will. I can't spend my time on yesterday and think that I'm going to have a hope for my tomorrow. You got to make a decision. You can't have yesterday and tomorrow at the same time. So which one you going to let go? Thank you, Holy Ghost. Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are holy, you got to make sure that if there's any virtue or any praise, think on these things. This is where you take captive the vain imagination that the enemy tries to put into your mind. How do I take captive the thoughts that the enemy has seeded which caused me to rehearse my pain and relive my disappointment and go through my trauma? How do I continue to rehearse that and the enemy continues to seed that into my heart? It's because you haven't countered it with the only thing that has the capacity to counter a, vo- a vain imagination and that is truth. You, If you know it's a facade, then you will no longer be terrified about it. When you found out that it was only a a facade it wouldn't scare you the way that you knew it because you already knew what was coming the first time you went through the haunted house you were terrified but the second and third time you decided to go through you knew where the demons were you knew where the, the, the scary things were you knew where they were going to pop out and say hey and you are there talking to them saying hey right back at you because you already knew where those things were so when you know where the things of God are then the enemy can ain't lie to you and tell you it's scary, it's death, it's doom, it's gloom, it's never going to happen. I've been through too much to be tricked. Tricks are for kids. I know who God is at this point. Think on these things. So benefits come with a burden, benefits come with caution. Last thing is benefits come with celebration. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. When they sent me 900 over 90, I said, Lord, I bless you. Oh, glory to your name. One of the most powerful things, and I'm, I can't deal with all the benefits. We'll deal with them next week. But one of the most powerful benefits that God gives you is a sunrise. <laughs> I got to drop that right there because I'm about to shout myself if I keep going. One of the best things God blesses you with is a sunrise. This is why it's important to close out your windows from yesterday. Okay, what do you mean? I had to call my IT director and say, hey, my computer's acting real slow. Stuff ain't working. Things won't open. It's popping on and then some of it it would just shut down and go off. So when he got here and he finally figured out what was going on, he says, well, you you got a lot of software running in the background. So I don't know what that means. He said it means that you didn't close stuff out properly. Or you started shutting stuff down, you need to make sure that you close stuff off. Because if you don't close the windows properly, it will affect your your, your function in your tomorrow. So when you get adequate sleep, your brain cleanses your worries. Your doubts, your fears, your anxiety of yesterday are washed away as if they were in a dishwasher. That's why I said you cannot have yesterday and tomorrow at the same time. You got to decide which one you want. So when you wake up and God gives you a sunrise, you got to understand and know what God is actually giving you. The sun is, is now, it's been studied in, hu- in human anatomy that the sun has incredible benefits to the human body. It improves your skin condition. When you get a little sun, just about 15 minutes a day will, will build your, help to build your immune system. It fosters the creation of vitamin D. It's where most people in the Chicagoland area and in the Midwest are vitamin D deficient. Because we have so many months where we don't see the sun. It normalizes your blood pressure. It cleanses your blood vessels when you get more sun. It has even medically been proven that it lowers your cholesterol. It turns it into a a, a hormone that is usable, that uh, even even a steroid, a natural steroid within your system. Uh, it, it, It destroys unhealthy bacteria. 
When you get a little sun, it helps to produce serotonin and melatonin. In other words, it just makes you feel good. That's why when your mama got up and it was cleaning the house day, all the curtains got to come open. We got to let some sunlight in here because it's going to make me not have to break your neck when I tell you to help me. It just makes you feel good. It regulates your circadian rhythm. It, it helps you with your sleep pattern. There's a lot of benefits to God's gracing you with a sunrise. It's not just that he lets the light come so you can see your path and see your direction, but it even personally benefits you in so many different ways. But there's, there's one other benefit that scientists have not necessarily concluded. I don't know that their study has even given you, uh, it has even given us access to the full breadth and capacity of what a sunrise actually does for our lives. I understand that they've, they've gone through scientific study and discovery and they've figured out that, that, that medically speaking, it, it, it affects and improves your skin condition and your immune system. It produces vitamin D. It cleanses the blood vessels. It helps with lowering your cholesterol. It destroys bacteria. I, I get that they've gone through all of these medical studies, but there was one study that I don't think they had the qualifications or the authority to actually to, to implement on our lives or in our bodies or in our lives and so but God gave me divine inspiration so that he could give me his revelation that not only does it help you with your, 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 your immune system not only does it help with your sleep rhythm not only does it help with your cholesterol but, but there's one benefit that the sunrise gives in that every single time you experience a sunrise you also experience a new mercy Let me tell you why you can't shout. Because you don't understand the value of mercy. So let me put your bill in perspective. That the wages or the penalty of your sin is death. In other words, according to the truth of God, every sin, every doubtful thought, every word, every deed of disobedience you have ever committed has already condemned you to eternal death. But then comes Jesus, who is the embodiment of God's grace and God's mercy. So when mercy stepped in, mercy said, I know they did it, but I'm going to take the penalty and I am their benefit package so you're going to not give them the weight of their own sin I'm going to take care of the bill but let me help you understand he, he, it wasn't Jesus didn't give us a PPO he gave us an HMO y'all missed it it went over your head he didn't give you a uh, half the bill he didn't just pay 75% of the bill he didn't pay 80% of the bill but he says I'm gonna pay 100% of every mistake every fault every shortcoming as long as they turn to me and I and they sign on a policy with me I've already paid their bill somebody ought to stamp your life paid in full good morning mercy good morning mercy Good morning, mercy. Every time I open my eyes, a brand new mercy I see. I have never awakened. I have never seen a sunrise. I have never walked into a new day and had to deal with yesterday's mercy. God says, I've got enough mercy that as many mistakes as you make, as many shortcomings as you have, as many times as you have forgotten, Gotten who I am. I got a new mercy for you. Good morning, mercy. The reason you ain't started shouting yet is because some of you are still under the weight and under the pressure, under the pain of your situation. But I came to tell you, I see a dawning of a brand new day. Good morning, mercy. Weeping me. Endure it for a night, but I feel joy creeping in this building. I feel 
feel joy coming in your section. I feel joy looking in your household. I feel joy sitting on your rogue. Good morning, mercy. Brand new mercy. Brand new joy. Brand new hope. Brand new peace. Brand new healing. Somebody bless him. Good morning, mercy. Oh, bless your name. Oh, bless your name. Oh, bless your name. If you had a sunrise, you should be blessing his name. If you woke up this morning, you should be praising his name. If you got up in your right mind, you should be thanking him now. If he brought you to the house of God, you should be praising him now. If he's keeping you in your house, you should be dancing right now. Good morning, mercy. Is there anybody here that's grateful for his mercy? Is there anybody here that's not ashamed to bless his name? If it had not been, let me remember for a minute. If it had not been for the mercies of God, I would have been, I should have been, I could have been. But God, but God, but God, but God, good morning, mercy. Oh, bless your name. Good morning, mercy. Good morning, mercy. Good morning, mercy. Millions didn't make it, but you are standing here in the sanctuary. Millions didn't make it, but you are one of the ones who did. Don't wait on your neighbor. They don't see what you're coming out of. Don't wait on your section. They don't know what you're about to shout through. Don't wait on your section. They don't see the hell you're coming out of. But I need a thousand people. I don't want just a few. Give me at least a thousand people that will shout right now. It's already done. It's already done. It's all. Already done. Somebody bless him. Somebody lift him. Somebody thank him. Somebody praise him. Yeah. Bless his name. Good morning, mercy. Good morning, mercy. You are one dance away. You are one hallelujah away. You are one glory to God away. You are one thank you Jesus away. Weeping may endure it for a night, but good morning, mercy is on the horizon. Bless your name, Jesus. 